play. Oh, good Jeremy. All right, I see you on here. Did you see it pop up on YouTube? Yep. Okay, my notifications are going off, so. Can you see, Matt, how many so far we have in the chat? You know what sucks is I can't pull. Oh, you know what? I'll get my laptop, and I'll pull it up on my laptop. Because as I say, every time awesome. I go over to YouTube, it cuts me off. Like, I can't hear anything. Somewhere we have an echo. Hang on. Who is the echo gone? I don't, I don't have one. Echo. I, I have have one. It was me because I didn't have my YouTube muted. Hello, Joe Roscoe. How you doing? Oh wow, um, Joe Roscoe. I haven't seen. <laughs> actually, so... I don't know if you're subscribed to Joe's channel. I love Joe. Joe actually has gotten quite good with his like video making skills like i don't know if he took a class or what but he's like very impressive so even joe's though in he's vegas, in vegas too right yeah joe's in vegas too and even though joe's in the nobody died camp it's like these videos that he's made over the last month or so are like very detailed and intricate i mean a ton of work went into them and it's like they're kind of jaw dropping so if, if you're not subscribed to him it's worth going over and taking a peek me and LVSA will meet up with them anytime. Oh, they'd have a good time. Yeah. I'm over on the south. Well, we're on the southwest side, so but Vegas is pretty small. So. Is there anyone else watching? So far, Joe's in the chat. It says 13 are watching. Um, I wanted to say hello to everybody and introduce. We've got Matt and Michelle on with us. The reason we're doing a live tonight is for all of these years, five and a half years that we've been doing all this research and stuff in all the groups and all the chats, people are always like, somebody needs to write a book. Somebody needs to write a book. Hello, Nick. How are you? And uh, so anyways, Michelle got a book published and it just came out on Amazon and, and Barnes and Noble. Oh, and Barnes and Noble too. I've got the Amazon link in the description of the video um, Matt ordered his and it came Thursday mine hasn't arrived yet so we haven't read it but we're gonna have Michelle talk about it oh I know you have Joe you've done a great job okay I just pulled up the chat so anyways well, we're waiting for some more people to get in here I just wanted to let everyone know that I was in Vegas in April, and one of the things on my bucket list is always to shoot the machine guns. And I'm always trying to talk my brothers into going to Battlefield Vegas or one of those places with me. And they're always like, we were in the military, we don't need to do that, that's stupid, it's expensive, blah, blah, blah. So I got my sister-in-law, my brother, we had a free day, and he's like, why don't you girls go shopping? Because <laughs> we're girls, right? So I'm like, we get in the car, and I'm like, Michelle, we're not going shopping. She goes, well, I needed to get this or that. And I'm like, no, 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 we're going to Battlefield Vegas. She's like, what's that? And I'm like, just wait till you get there. So we get there and pull in, and there's the helicopters and the tanks and that stuff all over the parking lot. And she's like, is this a museum? And I'm like, no, we're going to shoot machine guns. So we went in there and i'm telling you this was mega box expensive but one of the coolest things i've ever done and i wish i would have had like quadruple the money because you could buy more and more and more bullets like we shot these 50 calibers that were 95 bucks a bullet so we each got two bullets that's ridiculous that's robbery well, well they have these packages you know, when yeah, you buy yeah. these packages and this gun and that gun and this gun and they come with like 25 rounds of ammo. Well, for a machine gun, it's like, no, 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 no. I need like 100 rounds. I mean, 25 isn't going to cut it. So they make their money off of upcharging the bullets. Well, the 50 cal wasn't in the package that we picked. And I'm like, well, can we add it to the package? She goes, oh, yeah, you could do a la carte. It was like being at a restaurant. She goes, you can add anything to the package. So I'm like, okay, throw the 50 cal in. I'm like, can we take out some of the other shit that's in there that we don't need? Because they had like nine millimeter handguns of crap we didn't need. And she's like, no, we just add them in there. She's like, but the 50 cal only comes with one bullet. And I'm like, seriously? It's not, I get it. I mean, it's like a rocket launcher, but, but it's like one bullet. And she's like, yeah, it only comes with one, but you can buy extra bullets for 95. So I look at my sister in law and it's like, okay, we're each going to buy one extra bullet. Because we're already spending like 600 on these packages. 
Yeah. On top of the fact that now we're adding stuff on. So anyways, this was a badass. If anyone ever wants to go do something fun that you'll never do again, that's, I mean, this is probably one of the top things I've done in my life. It was that cool, but it, it is mega box, but it, oh, I, should, I highly, <clears throat> highly recommend it. I should make an announcement too that, um, Okay, so we all know that there's a couple parts of the FOIA in the FBI vault. However, they had sent me a letter essentially saying, that's it, there's nothing else to see here. Um, huh? So, yeah, <laughs> well, that's what they had said during the last <laughs> drop. Yeah, they they're did. not going to get away with that, I hope. Well, no, and the thing is, is um, I went back and I found the original letter, because um, they'll mail you out a letter if they want money from you for documents. Oh. Okay. And um, okay. I, if yeah. you ever need money for that, we'll all chip in. Yeah. No. 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 I. I'm. I'm sure everybody would be cool with donating. I mean, we yeah, had crowdfunded the PayPal, whole thing. We just send in money. I would pay whatever just to get the pages. Yeah. No. I. I. We originally collected all the money, and I felt like it was going to be too long. I wasn't going to hold everybody's money for five years. Like that felt super shady to me. So we had refunded everybody. We trust you. Yeah. But yeah. So, um, but anyway, I found the original. Michelle goes on state. vacation on us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she disappears. Hey, we know where to find her, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was I going to say? So it states specifically that there are 13,660 pages of responsive documents. I remember when you told us you were waiting for over 10,000 pages. So yeah. that's like your rough estimate is now it's no, no, no. the actual number. They The original let letter specifies that there's 13,660 pages. And how many did you get so far? A thousand? We've gotten less than 500, but most of them are redacted. Those two Complete, PDFs completely. were less than 500. You're right, because one was 300 and something, and one, I thought the other one... Well, one wrong. was There's, one was three one was three hundred fourteen. The other one was three hundred sixteen. So, oh, okay, so we're just over like six hundred, but that's not thirteen thousand pages. No, not by even any. close. No, well, it's like us when we were keeping track, and I mean, LVSA had the spreadsheet, right, right, and I had everything in my scratchy <laughs> notes. But Weg was working on it too when we were keeping track of all the the data dump stuff they were supposed to give us. How many pages? How many nine one one calls? Blah 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 blah. And it's like you start having these numbers, and it's like not even freaking close. But how do you hold anybody accountable? Right. Well, see, that's the thing is I've already reached out to um, lawyers that deal with this because there's a lot of money in it for them. But what I'm assuming had happened is uh, it was just a strategic thing on their behalf because they couldn't not give us anything. Um, that would be in violation of FOIA. Well, they, they thought this would just shut you up. Right. But – that means that I cannot appeal anything because I've received documents. So it's not like I can uh, complain and say we haven't received anything at all, which would be the course of action to take if they had just flat out denied it or if um, like we still haven't had it. So once again, I'm drafting a letter to um, my local representative here in Las Vegas. And we are going to see if they will um, open a congressional inquiry on the FBI about it. But I've oh, also gone. Con- well, the, the whole reason for FOIA is to keep the government accountable. It's to be transparent to the public so we can right. hold them accountable since we pay their salaries with taxes. So they're they're doing the complete opposite. They're kind of like, this is ours. We don't have to show you. And it's like, no, that's the reason for FOIA. I mean, it's a law. Right. And see, I speak to one of the journalists over at uh, Las Vegas Review Journal, and there's still things in court pertaining to the the, um, the well, shooting I know and they're evidence. Really, they're still in court because I, I keep close track of that to see if we get anything else. And I had also written like a bunch of letters to all the lawyers and news outlets and stuff about this. But it just seems to me that nobody cares. So as long as the girl you're talking to says they're on top of it, that makes me feel better. Because, like, watching this stuff and reading the, the court information and stuff just seems like they're not really – they're fighting over who's going to pay for what instead of, you know, actually yeah, they, getting the stuff. It's just because LVMPD keeps going into appeals because there was already a determination in the courts made that they are to give us everything and they can't charge – the millions of dollars that they no, were requesting. that's their excuse to not do it, is by saying right. that they're going to charge. But the judge that was presiding over the case, like, flat out said, like, these are excuses. You're being ridiculous. 
produce the documents by the, such and such a date. And that's when we started getting the releases. However, when we would request other documents that they would be mentioned in the reports or whatever, then we're getting um, the PIO saying, Oh no, sorry. Uh, that, that interview was recorded over. They don't, they don't keep those interviews. Right. Like Bullshit. How, wait, so you're telling me that I can't have documents because it's still being investigated for some reason, even though there was only one person charged criminally. They are and still that's saying that. it's under investigation, which makes me think there's something else. Uh, you don't yeah, know about I don't know. there's something else, or it's just their excuse. Yeah, they. Um, I'm I'm fairly certain that it's just a a way for them to mitigate any liability that should arise out of us seeing unfavorable um, behavior from their officers or like, you know, we have, they've already showed us the freaking Barney Fife uh, body cams. I mean, we already have an opinion on some of their officers. Yeah. But we don't see um, Hancock taking pictures of Paddock's body and said, you know what I mean? It's like, there's certain things that, that happen that, you know, I'm sure that are way worse that we're just not meant to see. So Right. Well, 134, we're not meant to see. Oh, yeah, for sure. Whatever yeah. the heck that room, I mean, I... Yeah, 134 guesses, is like the big but, issue. Yeah, that to me well, is... That's why, like I said, I've been reaching out to different um, attorneys that deal with this specifically because they may not want to touch anything on the local level, but at least I'll be more knowledgeable on how to move forward with local PD. Um what's crazy now is the turnover rate has been so high with LVMPD. It's like, obviously it's been five years. So anybody that was a beat cop is now like a detective. Or exactly. They've promoted and then, or moved on. And a lot of the, yeah, well, a lot of the older guys that were on SWAT and stuff, they've all moved on. So they've never showed it, Angela. Never. Nope. Too many of us have watched all the body cams and looked at everything. And it's like never 134. Never. Yeah, and see, I've compiled a list of things, and like I emailed them to to that journalist because they Good, just maybe they, if she asked for specific things instead of before we were just asking for numbers like this many hours of this, this many pages of that. Well, now that I'm published, <laughs> it's all bets are off because now I'm considered officially a, I'm officially media, so Good. I have the same rights as any newspaper or other publication. Good, good, good. Well, I want to get into the book before we get off on tangents, because you know how we can get. But um, no, we don't do that. I know <laughs> we do. So, anyways, for anybody just now joining, Michelle has written a book. It's published now on Barnes and Noble. Is that what you said, Barnes and Noble? Barnes and Noble and Amazon. And Amazon. So oh. Angela's got hers. Matt's got his. I'm still waiting for mine to come in the mail. But I've got the link in the description of where you can go to buy it. You can get it on Kindle or a paperback. We all ordered paperbacks because we wanted the copy in our hands. Yeah. And, I and the I had Kindle a hard version. Cover for you to uh, autograph. <laughs> I, I actually, I am. There was formatting issues that they wanted resolved. And, like, uh, to be honest, I'm not really happy with the Kindle formatting. But, I mean, it's, it's legible. But right now, the best option is that soft cover. Well, I wanted to read everybody. When you go to Amazon, they've got this blurb. I'm assuming Michelle wrote it, but it's like when it shows the description of like what this book's about. Um, it says a comprehensive review of the life of Stephen Paddock, the Las Vegas shooting on October 1st, 2017. Conspiracy theories surround the events and a compilation of reports from the Federal Bureau, uh, Federal, Federal Bureau of Investigation, Federal Aviation Administration, and previously unpublished letters found at one of Paddock's properties. The FBI said there was no motive for the crime. Is there something they missed or is it something more nefarious at play? I love that last line. I absolutely love it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Did you um, write it, that? I did. Yeah. I figured you uh, did. Yeah. It's it was kind of a struggle because like being there and being on the strip for like that five days because I was there from the first till the fifth, and it's like it's hard to. But there's no possible way for me to look at it completely pragmatically because it's something I experienced and went through, and you know things that I've seen and people I talked to. I'll influence you, but I did, I think I did a very good job of balancing um, the evidence-based things, and there's a lot of research that I went into about um, Benjamin Paddock, uh, uh, the shooter's father, 
I can't um, wait to read this because this is probably like all of our piles and piles of binders and notes, all concise in a neat, tidy form. Because now have... we've got so much stuff filtered out. Like, well, this is bullshit. This, you know, things that before we were all going in circles for. Uh-huh. So now that all that stuff's out, and you've just got kind of like well, no, stuff. everything I mention or any anything I talk about in there is in the reference list in the back, like. You can pull it up. There's, you know, the website information oh, or publication information just because I felt it necessary to document everything and to verify my sources. Like, I, there's nothing from the Daily Mail. There's there's nothing. like Right. That's what I'm saying. All those sites that we had to filter through back in the yeah. day, and things that everybody found and got all excited about and passed around. And then we were like, oh, big nothing burger. Um, yeah. I want to read the back cover of your book, too. I think it's I'm really trying thing. to get anybody that listens to this buy the book, buy the book. This is like really cool that we have somebody in our group that got a book published. No, it actually is different because I read it oh, today it? and I was looking for that last line and I was like, oh. why is it not here? I swear it was here and I was racking my brain and it's like, oh, it's the Amazon description. Okay, so. About the author, Michelle Toscany is an authority on the Las Vegas shooting. Her research has been prominently featured by Vice News, Paramount Plus, CBS Network, and NBC as well. Michelle has also been featured on a variety of true crime podcasts. At 10.05 p.m. on October 17, 2017, Stephen Paddock opened fire on the Route 91 Harvest Festival. 58 lives were lost that night and over 400 concert goers sustained bullet wounds. Given the magnitude of the tragedy, one would expect to know all the facts behind what motivated a man to cause so much carnage. For years, we have waited for answers from law enforcement, and finally we have the reports. Without motive examines the life of the shooter, problems with the investigation, discusses some of the rumors that have been poisted, poisted and huh, calls for greater transparency from the government, agencies, tasked with keeping Americans safe. Included in this volume are carefully (coughs) curated reports highlighting evidence provided by law enforcement as well as never-before-published letters found concerning Stephen Paddock. Okay, so everyone, I'm going to say it again. Get this book. We need to support Michelle. We need to support media outlets continuing to cover Vegas. And if this book does well, they'll be like, hey, you know, maybe there's something to this. Maybe we should still keep covering it because there's an interest. And I think that's important. And also the more interest we get in things like this, as far as the media covering things, the more pressure, I think, maybe, that it would push put on LVMPD and the FBI to actually give us the stuff we want because they think that, that there's nobody left that cares. And there's a lot of us that care. And there's probably a lot more people besides just people in our community that care that, you know, we just don't know. It's like one time a, a FOIA request came back from a guy, uh, remember Muckrock? Yeah. And it was I like, speak to him. he's I not speak even to him. in any of our groups and stuff. And it's like, so there are people out there hunting for stuff that I talked to him. They're not in our group. Do you still, or was it just yeah, back then? Yeah, we were just talking last week. Yeah. His name's Matthew Thelen. Oh, but, okay. Hi, um, Michelle. How are you? We're starting to get some people in there. Hey, LVSA, we hear you're supposed to be in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to come on? He's in his office. He oh. just built his own office. He's very excited about it. Oh, how exciting. So he has his <laughs> band cave room that he gets to decorate himself? Yes. Well, I, I wish I had one of those. My brother had <laughs> had, uh, he's, he's not lived in Detroit for years, but he's a sports fan. So I sent him all this Detroit stuff for the last 25, 30 years, but he's never had like a man cave to set it up in. So him and his wife retire. The kids are all gone. He finally gets this room. So he calls me like as excited as a kid on Christmas. He's unboxing all this stuff and getting ready to do all this stuff. And, uh, get his room finally all put together and now they have one of the kids <laughs> broke up with her boyfriend she's like 30 but broke up with her boyfriend and moved back home because she needs to find a job so she moved out where they were tired and i'm like well is kendra in the spare room and he's like no my my sports room's bigger so she's in there <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like damn you finally get your room like and literally it was like two months and he's booted out of his room so i oh, thought man. that was really funny 
<clears throat> I thought I could go ahead and I can read the foreword, at least if some like everybody gets kind of a feel for what the book is written like. Um, yeah, go and... ahead. I'm going to shut up for now. I just wanted to keep pushing everybody to go get it. Oh, get yeah. It, get it, cause this and is it's like really the only important. time I talk about like the survivors or anything because I wanted to be um, sensitive to uh, you know other people that were there or whatever the case may be and there is a page that has a Vegas strong resiliency center information and stuff i'm in contact with them pretty often and they're doing really good work in the community as well um not just for the shooting but um for any you know witnesses bystanders victims of crimes or anything in the las vegas the las vegas area so, okay, so this is a well, this forward. is exciting. I mean, this is exciting, and I got to tell you, I know I told you this when we were talking in, in text, but it's like I'm, like, so excited about this, and I'm, like, so impressed and proud of you for doing this. Oh, thank you. I mean, like, the amount of work to do this, plus, you know, to get it through to publishing and to be on sale at these places, and it's, like, like not like you're not busy enough running the kids around and going to school and all <laughs> this other stuff. It's, like, I don't know where you find time for all this, but it's, like, this is extremely impressive that you did this and i thank you very much thank you i i appreciate that yeah and there's going to be an author signing out here at the barnes and noble on rainbow boulevard i'm not sure on the date yet but um they will it ever be in hardcover yeah yeah it's just it was it's really expensive to produce so it's going to be 40 dollars when it comes out in hardcover i'm going to paypal you money pull me out one and sign it Oh, and yeah, then I'll, yeah. I'll give you money for postage and mail it to me because I think this is, I mean, just for nostalgic reasons, since we've spent so much time on this whole thing, it's like, I mean, my paperback, I'll be going through with a highlighter and all that, but it's like, I want like a nice hardcover to have like up on yeah. my shelf with the Bible. And I, I, I designed the cover, which I'm really I proud of myself. I love your cover. It's like a scope. On the Las Vegas skyline, all in red and charcoal black. And I, I added little totally tiny cool. helicopters. Like, there's little tiny helicopters I on there. I saw those. <laughs> yeah, I added those. But yeah, yeah. You, you did amazing. I mean, your your cover, your back cover. I want, I'm want. i going to let you take it on and read the foreword now, though, because I know I can okay. do that. So this is the foreword. Um, on the, uh, the first mass shooting of my lifetime happened on April 20th, 1999. The Combine High School shooting was nothing like I'd ever seen before. I was 17 years old, a senior in high school, as I watched my peers just a few states away, mourned the loss of their friends. I tried to, to work through what it must have been like for the students and faculty as they realized they were being hunted. I couldn't imagine the sights, sounds, and absolute horror as they have to experience their classmates, people whom they have grown up with, gunned down anyone cr who crossed their paths. I understood the same thing could happen at my school, my place of work, or anywhere else in America, for that matter. Since Combine, there have been too many mass shootings to list. Each new attack blurs together with its predecessors. The details are slightly different, but the results are always the same. People's lives are cut short. Sometimes adult lives, other times children's lives, and sometimes both. Families mourn the dead. Politicians offer up thoughts and prayers so frequently that they become empty and cliche. Thoughts and prayers are not a solution, nor are they an incantation to prevent the next tragedy. As I pen this, there have been three mass shootings in the last seven days. God doesn't want to hear, uh, th hear the prayer of another politician who chooses inaction over legislation. Once the smoke clears, survivors are left behind to carry the weight of loss. Some shoulder the guilt of escaping with only <clears throat> emotional and mental injuries. They count themselves lucky because their injuries are invisible. I imagine it's easy to let despair take over when living in the wake of such tragedies, especially knowing it's only a matter of time before their nightmare is eclipsed by someone else's. It may be weeks, days, or just a few hours before history repeats itself, but we all know that it will. History doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. Mark Twain. It is important to remember that there are resources available for people who live through the trauma, knowing when when to ask for help and where to find it can be life-saving. Kristen Burgess, director of the Disaster, Disaster Distress Helpline, a division of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, outlines the ramifications of simply surviving attack. And he, he's quoted as saying, when anyone experiences any type of traumatic event where their life is threatened or the life of someone they care about was threatened, and they survive that phenomenon. It leaves the potential to, 
to uh, for severe and very se- for very severe mental health concerns such as depression, substance, substance abuse, persistent and serious anxiety, or suicidal thoughts and gestures. And end quote. Of all the shootings that have happened between 1999 and today, none have consumed my life like the Las Vegas massacre. The motivation for researching this case has come from the need to make sense of what I witnessed. I was on the strip at the time of the shootings and remained in the city for four days. I quietly observed everything around me. I spent my time watching officers on the streets investigate. I spoke with employees from different hotels as well as survivors I would meet. I watched various law enforcement agencies collect as they collected evidence. I stepped over abandoned flip-flops, strollers, and bloodied clothing that littered the streets and hotel lobbies, hoping that the owners made it somewhere safe. Of everything I experienced during my week in Las Vegas, what stands out for me the most isn't the tragedy. It's the way the community came together in a moment of crisis. I remember civilians transporting the wounded and personal vehicles to the hospitals, hotels opening up rooms at no cost for people displaced in the chaos, locals bringing bottles of water and supplies to the strip, not knowing if it was even really safe yet. Off-duty firefighters, military members, veterans, nurses, doctors, police officers who assisted in the evacuation and medical efforts on the ground, and the hundreds of people who waited in line to donate blood to the Red Cross for trauma patients. That is what had the biggest impact on my life. I would like to believe that one person intends for, for what one person intends for evil will always result in the best being brought out in humanity. The motivation that drives me to keep digging for answers is the fact that the public deserves them. We have laws in place to ensure that there's access to reports and investigations from various agencies, yet they fight to cover uh, fight us every step of the way. The cost that comes with affording civilians transparency is a steep price of accountability. It is our job <clears throat> as concerned citizens to make sure Wow. Somebody went by on a motorcycle. Concerned citizens. That's outside my window. (laughs) (laughs) Make sure that the oath sworn by those in power is upheld. Lack of transparency gives rise for the appearance of impropriety. It is up to us to ensure our government is operating with integrity and we must be vigilant in doing so. Without citizens who are willing to demand access behind the curtain, there will be many more incidents of officers acting with impunity. We need to ensure that they do not become the criminals that they swore an oath to protect us from. I will continue searching for answers until we know why it has been so imperative for law enforcement to withhold information from us in the way that they have tried to in this case. Since 2017, there has only been one arrest and conviction in connection with the Las Vegas shooting. Douglas Haig was indicted for the illegal manufacture and sale of armor-piercing rounds of ammunition after a box of ammunition was found in the shooter's hotel room bearing Haig's name and address. That case is closed and there has been no talk of uh, any other arrests with regard to this case. There is no longer any reason for any of the agencies involved with this case to not be completely forthcoming with what they have learned. No matter how insignificant a piece of information may seem, it could be the missing piece that makes the the inconsistencies come together in a way that tells a logical story. As of my writing this, the only thing we know for certain is that a man perpetrated the deadliest mass shooting in United States history and the Federal Bureau of Investigation Behavioral Analysis Unit concluded that there was no motive behind the slaughter. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, nor am I a person who believes everything she sees on the news or anywhere else for that matter. I'm college educated. I'm a veteran. I I pride myself on the ability to think critically. I question everything. I argue for sport. I believe oppositional defiance can be a great tool for keeping a sharp mind and prevents one from becoming too precious about personally held beliefs. I have no time for speculation or hearsay and even less time for fairy tales. That being said, No other case in my lifetime has left me with so few answers as this one. Far too many questions are left unanswered despite how diligently many people have been researching. I thought by this, at this point, we would all have answers. I thought by now we would all be able to make peace with whatever we gleaned from the various reports and internet sleuthing, but there's much left unknown. I have more paperwork from Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department's legal department than I 
have fulfilled public information requests. Regardless, I will not relent until we have all of the pieces to this macabre puzzle. And that's the forward. Well, I got to tell you, Michelle, instead of going for nursing for school, you should have been a writer because you oh, are so a... eloquent with your words. It's like, mm-hmm. wow. I have a degree in writing. <laughs> oh, so oh, you, you, are, you know what? <laughs> yeah. That's why you used to have the handle uh, Writer's Revolution. Yeah, writer for Revolution. Do you remember Revolution. back then? Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. I remember yeah. in the chats. And then when yeah. you switched to the name, I was like, wait a minute. Are you the same person that blah, 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 blah? And you were like, yeah, that was me. I forgot about that. So you've got a degree in writing already. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe you can get rich on writing and then you don't have to, like, bust your butt being a nurse. That's hard work. I'd be more excited. More than money is just a matter of, like, getting people excited about and also empowered to go out and find things out for themselves. Right. Like, to not rely on um, the media and not rely on anything else other than, like, like primary sources like court documents witness statements things like that because tangible stuff you can have in your hand well it doesn't have any bias i mean yeah okay a witness statement may have bias but if you have 500 witness statements you can you can see a pattern you can tell who's who's uh, like exaggerating something and who's not right because they're all going to blend together yeah, and like then the it just comes down to like reports about multiple shooters. Yeah, well, I know. Well, that and not conspiratorial I mean, people don't go with that, but I'm telling you, there were stacks of witness statements that were like the men in black outside walking. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you have to understand too that like somebody would say something. It was like a game of telephone by like ten. Oh yeah. Five, like ten fifteen, just by word of mouth, everybody knew on the entire strip what was happening. So it's like, it's like wildfire. So rumors get spread, or or it's like a game of telephone. You hear something correctly, and then you pass it on a little incorrectly, and then it becomes more incorrect as it goes well, down. We the line. did that even through YouTube and our chats and stuff. People would say yeah. something, or I read something here, or someone told me that, and it's like a lot of stuff we continued to perpetuate for years. Before, you know, eventually documents came out or this or that, you know, and it was like, oh, okay, that straightens that out or, you know, check well, that answer box off your list. Well, that and it's like you go down rabbit holes because of people like I won't name the journalist that I spoke to, but the journalist that published the article in the Daily Mail about this mistress texts and things and, to, you know, come to find out after putting pressure on him and stuff, he sent me the original documents he has, and it's all BS. It's just not true. It's it's all fabricated, whether he fabricated it for himself, which he's only had two published articles, both concerning Paddock, both unverifiable, both from an anonymous source who does not want to be named, and um, the first one was the text messages, and the second one, the woman who sent those text messages supposedly got busted um at like a shopping mall with a firearm in new zealand which is like there's no guns in new zealand or whatever so i had to reach out to new zealand law enforcement to see if that story even existed and there was nothing on their records so it was like see this is how i've been spending five years (laughs) like going through and like sorting bullshit out from fact well you've done a good job thank you I mean, you, you've you sorted through a job. lot of stuff. We've all been treading and treading and treading. And the sad thing is, is we, we've we lost through death some of our, our greatest researchers. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me, Hunter, Nini, yeah. you know, it's like, I mean, it's just sad that some of the Hunter. people that like dug and dug and dug, yeah, Hunter, and, and had all this information and, you know, shared with people. And that's what I always liked is the researchers that like could get together and share without arguing and or toss with around arguing. stuff. Well, yeah, sometimes <laughs> there was that too. But you know what I'm saying? They would share. And then there was the other people that were, you know, mine, mine, mine. I'm not going to like collaborate with anyone or share this because it's mine. And it was like, well, that's not really helping because the investigation is like we're all supposed to be working together and putting puzzle pieces together, connecting the dots, you know. And it's just sad that some of these awesome researchers we had have passed away. Yeah, and that's who the, my first dedication is in my book is to Hunter because, like, he was him. he was really like yeah, a father figure. Yeah, and 
It was lost. I miss sleep. Ouija because Ouija, I mean, we were on the phone every day a couple times a day for hours and hours, and it's like, I just, he's just a sad one for me. I mean, I'm sad about Hunter very much so also, but Ouija and I just, like, talked more, you know? Yeah, yeah. See, I wasn't really involved in the community, really. Well, early on, I would comment or what have you, but I was working for the Postal Service at that time. and Silently on your own. Yeah, and I had worked a 60-hour work week, so I would come home and do research on my own. And, you know, it wasn't until the FOIA that I really got involved with the community. You've done great, and I'm, like, totally impressed by this book. And like I said, I know I've said it, like, three times already, but everybody, please go on Amazon. The link's in the uh, description and get the book. Thank I've you. Also 20 bucks the, uh, for the paperback. I clicked free shipping. That's why it's taken so long for mine to get here. Yeah, and if you have Prime, it's like it literally takes like 24 hours. Yeah, because, I know. Yeah. I don't have Prime, though, because I've got my sister-in-law's fire stick with her Prime on it for all the movies and music and all that. Uh, so if I got Prime for uh, through Amazon, it's like all I'd really be getting was the free shipping and yeah. the quick shipping. And I've learned with Amazon that it's like I'd fill stuff up in my cart. And it's like if you get to 50 bucks, your shipping's quick and free anyways. Yeah. But I did the book so fast, like as soon as you told me, I ordered it that night. So it was like, well, I'm not going to save up and go hunt for a bunch more stuff to make it come up to 50 bucks. So I just, you know, pay the 20, <laughs> on the free shipping and it's well, taking its sweet old time. Also, if you order it online at Barnes and Noble, they'll ship it to your local Barnes and Noble for no cost. You just pay for it online and then you go pick it up when it comes in. And I it's used usually to a live day or two. in bookstores and I got to tell you, I haven't been in a bookstore in years. Yeah. Since Amazon came out and you can get everything, it's like I used to literally like once every other week be browsing around in a bookstore like like you know I was in a candy store. Yeah, I still go to bookstores all the time. I love Do you? getting books. Yeah, and my kids oh. like a voracious reader also. So. Well, that's bookstores are becoming far and few between, when I unfortunately. Because my, my daughter was like, I mean, from the age of four, she's like, can we go to the library? There's like three or four Barnes and Noble in Vegas and Henderson. Like there's a there's a lot of them out here, and they're always packed, which is really awesome to see. That is like good. I, I hate like I don't like read like the advantage of reading something digitally. At least you can see it at night. You know, like you don't have to have lights on. But like I like having a physical book in my hand. It's just like maybe it's just my generation. Well, I'm like that too. I don't I don't do the the online ebooks. I just I've got to have a book. I've got to have a book where I can bookmark, highlight, post-it note. It's like, that's just, oh, maybe yeah, that's another older, thing. but yeah. So I was really worried. I, I talked to the publisher. I was really concerned about the clarity of the documents um, because they were compressed from uh, like eight and a half by 11 down to the book is six by nine. Um, and you don't get to take up the whole space on the page, but the documents came out really great. Um, I oh, just figured so afraid that you, by the time they shrunk them down, you wouldn't be able to read them? Yeah, yeah. And then... Well, I think that after we get a good amount of people that have bought the book, then we need to do another live where it's actually like, a, you know, when people go to book club <laughs> in the movies and they all meet and talk about the book they just read. We could all do that after we've all read it. I think she's it. muted. Michelle, we can't hear you anymore, dear. I put the... Uh, yeah, you are the, muted, Michelle. Yesterday, I put the... in two of the Facebook groups about the book. Oh, I haven't posted anything in the group yet. I'm glad you did that. I, uh, I'm here. I just got kicked off my headset. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, any of the groups, Matt, go ahead and post that, and then uh, I can post this video on them later. I didn't, I was so busy doing other stuff, I didn't uh, get this posted in the groups, and I also didn't, uh, usually I like send the links for the lives out to a bunch of people through Facebook Messenger and email, and I didn't get that done either. So... Although I'm looking at our thing and it's like, well, we have the same amount of people watching that normally watch even when I go and push it. And I know Angela always sends the links out too. 
Yeah, she posted something in the Discord thing about it. I don't see had... Discord. Oh. I just got on recently. Michelle's on it too. I get well, too many. On what? Oh, just probably go in. Send yeah. me the link, Matt, and I'll figure out how to do it. Because yeah, send it to me on Messenger. I just haven't done it. I was, um, I'm like way behind. Like I don't do TikTok. The only reason I made a TikTok account was so I could go watch Michelle's stuff, and I don't do Instagram. And I mean, I'm just. You end up getting so many different things that it's like I can't keep track of all the logins. And then I got all the Facebook groups to run. Okay. Um, I had yeah. to run downstairs. <laughs> I wanted to play something really quick for everybody. My friend Rocky sent this to me. And this is like jaw-dropping. And I just want to see if everybody else um, thinks the same thing. He sent me two screenshots. So I just made a short little blur video showing the screenshots um, and talking about them. I've got it unlisted, but I just, it was easier to pre-record it and put it on here. Um, let me see. Hang on. Let me pull it up. I just want to know what everybody thinks about this. Screen share. They keep changing everything. Okay. It's under present now. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay, good. Okay, can everyone see that up on their screen? Um, I'm gonna hit yeah, play. I can see it. All right, I'm going to hit play. Okay, my friend Rocky sent me this, and I'm sorry. This is so messed up, it's freaking me out. This is a F1 racing event that MGM is sponsoring, and they have Skybox Clubs that are called the Paddock Club, um, which is just creepy as hell because why would they sponsor something that has that name what is the paddock club so i just think that's like really really weird and then hang on i'm gonna on top of that because michelle missed it this is pretty short okay sent me this and i'm sorry this is so messed up it's freaking me out this is a f1 racing event that mgm is sponsoring and they have skybox clubs that are called the Paddock Club. Yeah, but a paddock um, is just like a corral that the people like. Creepy as hell in because also. why would they sponsor something that has that name? You can see up here. Because a paddock, paddock is just like a corral. So I just think well, that's I know like it's really, corral, really weird. But you and then think MGM on top would say of that, that's in poor taste. We got to change the name. They have. Um, hang on, let me pull it up. They're sponsoring the grandstands. No, they just want to profit off of it because they're going to make a ton of money off of races. The F1 Paddock Grandstand is located across from the pit lanes. These amazing mm -hmm. seats will give you a view of both the start, finish line, and all the pit crew action. For a, so they've for got a thousand two different areas a that they named. Well, they didn't name them after Paddock, but they're sponsoring them. So somebody else named them that. But MGM's a sponsor. MGM Grand, Park MGM, Bellagio, Delano, Excalibur, Mandalay Bay, Luxor. There's a whole bunch of hotels, but most of them are MGM properties. So anyways, I think this is totally messed up. I just, there aren't even words to say. So anyways, I wanted to show this on here and see if anyone wanted to have a discussion about it. Because this is just unbelievable to me. Actually, I think they call where, no, like their pit. Like, where they do the pit jobs? I think it may be called the paddock also. Well, this is the thing. I completely understand that, that you know, the definition of paddock is a corral. And I, I know that in the racing, like you said, the pit, that could be what it's called. But with MGM being such a huge sponsor of it and all their other owned properties, I just think that, that when it came down to, like, doing it, they should have been like, look, this is Vegas. That was a shooter of the worst mass shooting in, in modern history. Can we name it something else before we put our stamp on it and give you all this money as a sponsor? I mean, they could have easily controlled whether they called that ticket grouping, ticket package, the Paddock Club. I, I just, I don't know. To me, that's just... You know, whoever's sponsoring has all the big bucks that they're giving to the event, and they should be able to make that call and be like, look, this is in poor taste. I just, that's just my opinion.
How about the bump sock gang? Danny, you're funny. Um, anyways, I just wanted to throw that in in the middle of this. It was just short, but uh, in your yeah. book, Michelle, what is your thing that stands out the most? I mean, like your your chapter or section that like you're most proud of. <laughs> um, I did. I mean, I I spent a lot of time researching um, Benjamin Paddock. But I'd probably say, I don't know. There's little pieces in every chapter that I'm pretty excited about. Because, like, I had, I found doc, uh, articles and things that I had, I had saved for myself from, like, 2018. And, like, rereading them, it was, like, really exciting for me to include the information. Like, there was, um, like, a publication in the, uh, the magazine that first responders subscribe to. And I had pulled information from that, and it was just talking about the response, um, the places of egress, and everything like that. But um, I probably think the most interesting thing, which I don't know if it's just because it, it has to do with me personally, but um, I don't know how many of you <clears throat> remember that Paddock was supposed to stay at the Tropicana, or not supposed to. He tried to get into the Tropicana. Well, the reason he was denied is because my parents had that room. <laughs> So Tropicana said no. He dropped 15 grand on the slot machines and stuff there. Still said no. And then my parents got bumped from the room because the owner was in town. <laughs> but How uh, actually, did you sift through all of your stuff and concise it into one book is what I want to know. With all the no, papers, that's why, like, unlike the there's like a section that's like conspiracies or like events that were odd, like the helicopters hovering, which I've lived in Vegas for three years and I have flight radar and I go on every night and I look, I pulled up like different laws and regulations pertaining to like helicopter flight in the city, <clears throat> um, like specifically for the Grand Canyon and strip tours. And that just makes zero sense. They should not have been there. No, they shouldn't have. They absolutely um, shouldn't have. And that's the thing. It's like we had people in the community, you know, the, we used to call them the narrative pushers. But when we would bring that up, they'd be like, no, there's no law against that. No, there's this and that. And it's like, no, you know, we know. There's actually a specific law that, that says they cannot hover at all whatsoever unless it's a matter of life or death exactly. or they're landing or taking off. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And when we would state that to these people, it's like these were intelligent people. They knew. I mean, if they didn't know what the laws were, they would know how to get them. I mean, if we could find them out, they could find mm -hmm. them out. It's like they were literally just trying to push it another way. And that's what they would do all throughout our you know, as we all investigated this, they would funnel and push stuff their way. And then they would end up looking like fools because it was like, okay, this is common sense. We, you know, there's 10 of us that looked up the law and you're going, no, that's not a law. And it's like, if they would have just cooperated with everybody as we were all researching together, you know, a lot of people had different ideas and opinions. And I mean, a lot of us built off of each other and you know different people would say hey go here and look go there and look hey i got these documents you want to read them you know and it's like people would share and, and collaborate and then you'd have the narrative pushers that would just Shit. be saying outrageous stuff about no that's not true no that's not true and it's like well if we could all find it and we're not idiots then you could find it too so you know that it's true and for some reason you're saying this to try to sway something and i never liked that yeah, I mean, there's no reason the helicopter should have a uh, southwest call sign either. So I make a comment in there about like Boeing 737s aren't known for their hovering capabilities. Exactly. But um, I spoke with pilots over at Maverick, and they were like, "No, like, <laughs> like at no right. time would we." They're like, "For strip tours, we want to be." out and back within 20 minutes like total like everybody on everybody off and loading the next crew in so well and yeah they do those tours i mean they've done them for years and mm -hmm. you know the guys at maverick and the different places and it's like it's routine for them they know what they can do what they can't do they do the same tour over and over so when something was odd that night and not following the regular pattern and it stood out to us then people that went to talk to them, they were like, yeah, yeah, no, we don't do that. And it's like, okay, you don't, but we're seeing it. 
See, I primarily so just wanted to reach out and see if it was true that they had no idea what was going on until air traffic control said something. Because I had my doubts about that because I wasn't exactly sure. Um, but supposedly no. But who knows? You only know if you're there. <laughs> exactly. But uh, I wish I could have said more about people that are still living. But uh, I don't want to get sued. What do you mean people? Uh, the Joanna thing Hunter was talking about a long time oh, ago. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah a lot yeah. of that, that was like there was stuff we kept out of the groups and the chats a lot back in the beginning because it was like we didn't want to like actually say something we could get sued for, but there were a lot yeah, of Yeah, I mean, like, the yeah, chances of we were 99.9% that, that... sure about a lot of stuff, but we still didn't want to get nailed for it. After a while, I just didn't care anymore. It was like, sue me. But it's different for you when you've actually got this in a published <laughs> book yeah. that you're selling. So, I mean, you would you would definitely... Well, like, Mary Lou Danley, I could say stuff about comment. because she was already known to the public. But things that I uncovered with Hunter and LVSA when we were on this project we were working on um, is not known and um, could potentially be a, not a security risk. Well, yeah, a security risk for them. There's crazy people out there. I don't know if you remember, like the the day I announced I was going to publish my book, and in when I was living in Tucson, somebody shot as I walked out the door, <laughs> which is probably coincidence, but it was enough to be like, "Holy crap! I announced I'm writing a book, and now I get shot at." Oh, I remember way, way back at the beginning, there were survivors that were, you know, talking to us and stuff, and they were just like, well, we don't want to say too much or put our names out there too much because we don't want, you know, the fact Yeah, it was right after the, 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 my apartment got nervous. shot at that I was like, forget it, I'm just going to use my real name. Because even the cops looked at the ring footage and they're like, holy shit, were they waiting for you? And I was like, that's what it feels like. Sorry, I'm typing in the chat. Well, I'm thinking that enough time's gone by now. Nobody's been murdered to be shut up about this so far. So everyone's probably pretty safe. Although you've just published this thing. So <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if you might want to look over your shoulder just for a little bit. No, if they were going to do it, they would have done it while I was living in Naked City. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're, it was... Scary down there, and they could have taken out two birds with one stone. So, I guess uh, I think we're okay for right now. Did anyone in the chat have questions for Michelle about anything pertaining to her book or her research? Definitely, please buy her book just for collectability. Even if you know, you already know. Michelle, when did you start? Uh, it's still good to this have. Book. Did I start actually sitting down to write it? Yeah. About two weeks ago, three weeks ago. That was it? You yeah. Got done that quickly? Yeah, I mean, it's only like my writing is only about, let me see, like 80 or 100 pages. I misunderstood your question, Matt. No, no, no. How long did it take to write the book? No, when when did you start? I asked when when did you start it, and you said three about three weeks ago. Yeah, about three weeks ago. The actual writing aspect, I've had articles and research and stuff piled up. I've had outlines and stuff that I played with, and partial chapters and stuff. But like, I really sat down. I can write a book, probably a three hundred page book, in probably a month. Wow, that's fast. Yeah, but it my family life suffers for it because I'm literally working 12 to 14 hour days. Are you done with schooling now? I had to quit. They raised uh, tuition by 8%. So you still don't have the nursing license yet? No. No, they want eight grand for me to come back. Oh, man. How much, mm -hmm. how much longer Maybe do you you'll have? make money off your book. I, I only have like six or seven months left. <laughs> She's close to being done. Mm -hmm. But that's what I get for going to private school. So I'm looking to see if anyone has questions for you in here. Everyone's having a good time talking in the chat. But does, if anyone has questions for Michelle, put them in all caps. So I'll tell you what the chapters are. Let's see. What do we have here? Yeah, go through and browse through and tell us what all the chapters There's are. There's Tragedy Strikes, which is... 
primarily about the time during the shooting. Where's my table of contents? Um, I got early years of Paddock, which is his childhood, his schooling, his marriages, his pro you know how he started buying properties and his early retirement from um, Lockheed Martin or its predecessor. Then, um, oh no, there's keeping up appearances, which is how the city works really hard to put a, the, their best foot forward so that people continue to get drunk and continue to gamble and feel safe in a city that's actually kind of dangerous sometimes. Um, but they, they don't, they don't ever want it to look that way to tourists. So I think that had a lot to do with the secrecy behind a lot of aspects of the investigation. Um, however, in that chapter, it does touch on, um, surveillance, uh, surveillance methods that the, that the city's been using since 2014 and uh, my question as to why we've never seen all the footage that they claim that they had even in 2014 as far as um, mobile uh, mobile cameras and um, face detection and all this other stuff like um, it also talks about the fact that like the earth cam going down in the Bellagio when it's never gone down ever before or since or it's gone down one time since and it was just right when the people were finally right. Yeah, right when the shootings were reported. Um, <clears throat> there's a chapter on the investigation, obviously. Um, uh, FBI Most Wanted, which is about Benjamin Paddock. There's a short chapter about Mary Lou Danley and where her whereabouts were, and the fact that she tried to open up lines of credit the same night as the shooting, which really rubs me the wrong way because if my spouse or partner went and opened fire on a crowd full of people, the last thing I'm thinking of is applying for visa credit cards. I got a question from the chat for you, Michelle. Joe oh, yeah. wants to know the date and time you're going to be at the Barnes and Noble on Raid Rainbow. I don't know that yet. You. I will let you know as soon as I know, um, the store manager is going to call me okay. and let me know, but they've already approved it as a local author thing. Cause that'd be going. cool if Joe came in there and you signed his book. Oh yeah, for pictures. sure. Yeah. Um, then there's like conspiracy theories in chapter seven, my final thoughts. And then the last, like a good, I don't know, probably about less than half of the book, but is all of the like FAA reports, some FBI reports that I mentioned in my writing, the whole, um, talk, the toxicology and autopsy report for Paddock. And then the letters, all the letters that we received from LVMPD, <laughs> um, that they received anonymously. I published those, which they're not verified, but there is a claim that he was CIA or retired CIA in those letters. But obviously, that agency is not going to confirm or deny anything. That we received. The what? The recent letters that we received. Is yeah, that yeah. About? the question more than questionable ones mm -hmm. but they have nobody's ever seen them before except for the ones that you know the couple people that had them when i got them um so i wanted to make sure everybody could take a look at them because the more eyeballs that are on it you could catch things that we would miss or you know well that's crowd. what i was gonna say when, we're, when we all start going through the books with our highlighters and stuff it's like we're gonna find stuff you know that everyone's gonna be like aha you know you're gonna answer questions that other people had, or you're going to have a question about something that someone else has an answer to, and they're going to be like, hey, Michelle, blah, 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 and you're going to be like, oh, good, thanks, you know? Yeah, and I mean, as soon as, I mean, it may be another five years before we see anything again from the, F the FBI or whatever, but um, when we do, I'll have more content to write about, and I'll cherry pick things that I find important or interesting, and I'll include them well, in I that book. I noticed in the back cover you wrote this volume, so I assumed that you had plans on, on um, one. Yeah, well, I mean, there's really nothing left to say. And that was what's, what was difficult about writing this book, too, is, like, there's two groups of people. People that are vaguely familiar with the case and then people that are obsessive like we are. And um, it, you don't want to sound crazy because if you say everything that you know about the case fast enough, you sound like a complete lunatic. Yeah, and but you then, know what? The thing is, is the general population... 
of not people, you know, like us that have been looking into all this, but just like regular people that might buy your book, they're going to be like jaw on the floor reading some of this. Yeah, like, I mean, I there's like no in a conspiracy or like the, the strange instances, here. like like the Reno house getting burglarized, like while the FBI and ATF were in that house, like okay. Monday or no, they were there. Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they were at the house doing investigations. Saturday, the house got broken into via the front door and nothing's missing. But like who, like it's not some common, like, well, first of all, it's a gated community. Um, second of all, it seems like a really nice area. So it's not just like some gang member, like breaking <laughs> in, like this was something more deliberate and it struck me as very odd, especially since like, I mean, they brought in, I posted pictures of like SWAT team was there, bomb, um, the bomb squad was there, uh, ATF, FBI, state police, Reno PD, um, and all the neighbors were there. I mean, they had snipers out while they were doing this raid. And like the neighbors were, they looked scared to death, but you know they're going to be on high alert. They're going to be looking for any activity going on around that house. Somebody had the balls to go in there and break in right. and supposedly took nothing. I'm thinking they took something that was hidden, but they had to have known what well, exactly it was. I don't think was. a regular civilian person. Oh, no, no, no. That's what I'm saying. A person just... that didn't want to mess with the warrant or the, you know, tagging and bagging. They were looking for something. Yeah, so. But yeah, the general that, population of people, you know, in Vegas and elsewhere. That, no clue. That, you know kind of follow the shooting a little bit but they weren't in all these groups like us they're not going to know so much stuff that you've got in the book yeah i mean they're just going to be in awe to realize well, quite a few copies of <clears throat> quite a few copies have sold because i've been kind of keeping track to see like okay oh, this is the community track of that oh yeah i have metrics and stuff that i pull up but um well, i've gotten messages in the facebook groups that a uh, few people have bought it so awesome yeah no um that's what i was gonna say it's like i i really want everybody to read it from our group but like also it's like other people i want like one retired fbi agent to read it and go hmm, maybe i can shed some light yes. <laughs> you know what i mean like you never know and that's why i'm i'm I, I hate going out and talking to people and things but like i force myself to do it because that's always the best information that I get is from going out and actually speaking with people and well, I'm putting sure myself out there. There's a large amount of law enforcement that was involved in that night or followed kind of what was going on, you know, from a distance that had some questions. We're not the only people that had questions. A lot of this was common sense stuff. So those are a lot of the people that might buy your book, just kind of like, okay, there's someone out here questioning things, and I've been questioning this and not really having anyone to discuss it with. So let's see what she's got. And they're gonna My kid is embarrassed by me because <laughs> I got pulled over like about a month ago, two months ago. And, like, I started grilling the officer who pulled me over about whether or not he was there. She's just like... Was he? <laughs> no, no. That's when I started realizing they're all young kids. Because my neighbor's house got his door kicked in or whatever. And I had to go because I was a witness for that. And I was talking to the officers that responded. And they were, like, babies. I'm like, you weren't working October 1st, 2017, were you? And they're like, no. But, yeah, it just embarrasses the hell out of my kid. My kid's like, could you just let it go already? Like... We have to do this again. How old's your kid that got embarrassed? I'm going to guess. She's so. going to be 16 next month. Oh, okay. A little bit older. Yeah, usually when they hit around 13, you know how they start. Well, she's just parents. sick to death of hearing about it, like, given who she lives with. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, this has been her life also for the past five years. I had gone, when my kids were all grown up, I had gone, there was this thing that I was constantly researching, constantly, you know, talking about it at the dinner table so much, like you said, that they get sick of. And sure as shit, these guys got let out of prison 17 years later. My kids were all adults by then. And it's like, I uh -huh. them all up and I'm like, I was right. I told you. I knew it. I was right. And they were like, oh, man. I mean, they let them out because they figured they were innocent after all those years of them being stuck in prison. So it was kind of funny because, you know, the kids know that whenever I'm looking into all of this stuff, it's like there's something to it or I wouldn't be wasting my time. 
Yeah, yeah. No, her friends are like impressed by it, so I guess that's kind of cool. But I she she's just tired of hearing about it. <laughs> like dinner topic every night for the past yeah. five years. I'm sure your daughter oh, yeah, loves that. Huh? By now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's growing up, so she's always out now with her friends and stuff. So, yeah. so how many books have sold so far? <laughs> um, I can't tell you off the top of my head. I think the last time I looked, like 30. And it just came out, what, three days ago? The 26th. Okay. Actually, so it re-released like the... It came out the 24th, two days early. Because they had it published, well, like, ready to go. hopefully this video and spreading it around in the groups and stuff will get you some purchases. And, yeah, and it's, it's uh, not a very long... It's not a, like, it. it's not an incredibly long read. Um, I know Eric... Try to get Dr. Phil. What? Try to get a gig on Dr. Phil to promote your book. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't think I like, I don't know. It's just such a weird thing where I'm like, am I interesting enough for that? I don't know if I have yes, the personality for that. Um, but it, the book is like, it's not incredibly long. I mean, Eric got it done in like a couple hours. He was already done with it. So um, it's a lot of information. So it's, oh. a, I can sit down and I'll be done with it in a couple hours. Yeah. 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 Okay. For sure. Um, I mean, depending on how long you take with the documents and stuff, but like the actual, like my writing and stuff is, I mean, it's like a hundred pages or something. It's not that, that long. Oh, that's uh, not too bad. And I try to keep it like, I don't drone on and on about things forever because I know that gets dull. So it's, it's very fast paced. There's a lot of information. Um, there's a lot of sources, like I said, in the back that you guys can reference yourself. Or if you have a question about an article I reference, it's all back there so you can pull it up yourselves. Um, uh, yeah, and I encourage everybody to do that. I always tell everybody question everything and use critical thinking. And um, But also, you know, don't become too precious about your theories because you never know, you know, unless you're right there witnessing it firsthand. Like, you really don't know what happened. No, so. we never will. I mean, we can try to find answers to stuff and speculate and, you know, discuss till we're blue in the face. But it's like you said, it's like if you weren't in that room doing whatever was done and witnessing this stuff, it's like no one's ever really going to for sure know. Especially, you know, I mean, you have the perfect title. Yeah. You know, see, the only speculation like, I added in my book is my theory about Paddock wanting the Tropicana room more than the Mandalay Bay room just because of its location and just because it was right over the street that the dead end street that goes right into the casino at Tropicana. Like if you go to Giles and cross Reno Tropicana, hmm? do they have to demolish date set yet for the Tropicana? It's like a couple years out, but yeah, they oh, already said that okay. they're for sure demolishing it, which I want to try and get that suite that they had because, because that thing's dope. Like it's, like two store, it's really cool. I was watching a video. I, I finally found a yeah, video. Yeah, I, I saw that video. That you Wait, they have a two story suite. Yeah. Huh? They have a two yeah, story suite. Yeah, it's suite. called like the I don't know. It's some penthouse suite over at Tropicana. The view's garbage. Really nice. I mean, the view is literally the fuel tanks and Las Vegas Village. It's almost a mirror. Oh, the perfect. of Mandalay Bay. If that makes sense. Instead of the back side of the stage, you're looking at the front side of the stage. Well, actually, that's probably the angle he would have preferred. Well, my theory's in there. Like I said, like I mean, people had two ways to, to run, and it was either towards the tanks or away lasted. from them. So if he had made the tanks go off, then everybody would have been corralled right there right. into the area around Tropicana. So, and like I said, I got 6.30 in the morning at Tropicana and there was blood like from my, my waist down, um, in the hallways and the carpets. And it was, it was bad. You could like taste the metallic, you know, in your mouth. It was, it was a lot for sure going down there and seeing it. Angela's going to come on with us. I wonder, did she say how much of the book she's read? So far, she has she hasn't gotten it yet. I think it's coming on Tuesday. She said, 
Oh, that's mine's coming. I think on Tuesday too. I keep checking the tracking though. Usually they come that's tomorrow than they say. I keep looking out my. I mean, the neighbors probably think I'm crazy because it's like. Originally, <laughs> they said it was, mine was supposed to come on Friday, and they said it was supposed to come Thursday, and I got it Thursday. Yeah. And it arrived. It arrived like 20 minutes after I left for work. So I'm like. Uh, yeah, I got we got our copies pretty fast. So well, usually when I order on Amazon, even if they say it's four days out, it's usually there the next day. That's why I'm really shocked that the book's not here yet. Well, right, it's I'm a holiday weekend. The they work. USPS yeah, Amazon delivers Amazon on Sundays still too. Hi, Angela. Hi. Yeah, I was supposed to get mine hey, tomorrow, and they delivered it today. Mine's supposed Hi. to come tomorrow, and I was hoping it came today. I'll have to look. Did at you guys show? Did you show the book? The cover's on there. It's back. So I'll show. I brought mine out here too. Oh, good. Sh show you guys. Is it cold where you're Oh, at? awesome. I really like the look of it and the feel. Oh, beautiful. Of whatever you picked, it's a really good feeling. Thank you. Yeah, I they wanted to know if I wanted matte or glossy, and I was like, definitely matte. Yeah. And then it tells about the author on top. And then it gives a nice little write-up here. I haven't read it yet. I just got it. And then I'll just do a quick, like, little... Let's see if I could do this. Is it cold out by you, Angela? Uh, I have a sweater on. That's what It's already noticed. 90 degrees in Vegas right now. I'm over it's it already. 82 here today. It's 78 right now where I'm at. First time. I don't know if you guys are looking, but yeah. And then there's documents put in. Is there a way I can put Angela big? Let's see. Yeah, there is a way. Matt, how would I do hit, that so we can you see have to Angela hit big? My icons, three little dots, and then you say solo layout. Note: My choices are banned from studio, kick from studio, edit mic settings, and edit name. Yeah, not that one. So it's little three dots, and you should That's be able. That's the three to... dots. Hmm. Oh wait, okay. that was the three dots down at the bottom. So yeah, you got to. I got gotcha. you. Okay. You gotta hit me. There we okay. go. All right. Yeah, now we so... can see. <clears throat> That's the top. There's the little helicopters in there. <laughs> so I'm telling Joe. And then I'll show you the back again, so you can see it better. So that's about the author. And a nice little write-up on the back. The book feels really good. It's not your regular book cover. No, oh, it's not a glossy one. It's a matte finish. Yeah, but it's almost like it has like a slight... Velvety feeling? Feel. Yeah. Like a velvet, almost like a little bit of rubber. It's a oh, real cool. nice feeling. I don't know how to describe it, but... So I'll flip through again so you guys can just kind of get an idea. So that's like her writings there. Okay. And then there's a few inserts. And then there's some documents. And if you like it, leave a review also because that helps promote the book also. Like on Amazon where the yeah. thing is? And then she does have reference links in the back of the book. So, but Yeah, everything I reference oh, the formatting is wrong on that, but everything that I used is in the back for sure. And then there's the And the finish. link's in the description if you want to go order it on Amazon there tonight. For nineteen ninety nine, I it? think this is totally cool. Who published it for you? I did. Oh, okay, because I was looking for publisher information and I could not find it. Yeah, no, I'm under copyright and work? I published it. I felt it was redundant, so I just didn't. Got it. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right, you could take me off solo. <laughs> All right, now how do I do that, Angela? <laughs> uh, go down below all of us and click the ones that show many you know okay do it again there you go There. okay yep I'm glad you do these lives all the time I always miss them but you know all these tricks 
Oh, okay. Hold on. I'm going to mute for a minute. I love the way that looked. I'm glad Angela came on and showed us. Yeah, I like the cover. It's definitely pretty cool. Thank you, Please guys. Stick, be nice in there. He's trying. <laughs> he's trying to school everyone in the chat. With my chat, you need to just hold your breath because you are not going to convince anybody of anything in there. <laughs> everyone has their own ideas and thoughts and opinions, and you're not going to change anyone at this point. I think it's cute that he's trying, though. <laughs> Bless his heart. Is Angela still muted? Yes. So, Matt, you said you got yours and was just starting to thumb through it. Did anything jump out at you? I started through the forward of it. That's as far as I got. I want mine to come so bad because now that she said I can read it in a couple hours, I'm one of those people that when I start a book, I do nothing else, not even eat until I'm done. I'm like a speed reader, so it's like I want my book to come so I can hurry up and start reading it. It'll be better than watching Netflix. Yeah, I'm the same way, except for I'll sit down and read a whole book. Just, yeah, I'll stay up 24 hours just to power through it. Which I just when scored. It's I got something some... you really, really like. It's way easier to read it fast because you're yeah. trying to turn the next page. Yeah, I was <laughs> muted. I had to get my card out. Uh, What'd you have to do? I was getting my card out for a purchase. I like that picture that you've got on there tonight. Your hair looks really pretty. That was taken in February when I went to my second cousin's wedding oh it looks beautiful so that's what I look like when I wear makeup <laughs> yep mostly everybody sees me with no makeup now oh I'm so. like that it's like unless I'm going somewhere like you said a wedding or something it's like I yeah I hardly anymore. just because it's I need to get different well when it's makeup. hot out it just melts anyways yeah I just don't feel a need <laughs> But yeah, as far as <clears throat> more documents, um, as soon as I hear back from them, they may want money, they may not want money. I don't think that they would because they're dumping everything in the in the vault. But um, yeah, you're not asking for paper copies <laughs> to be mailed to you. Oh no, no, but that doesn't matter. Like they're like, because uh, I because when I had first gotten that, I was like, what if I mail you the CDs? And they're like, nope, can't do it. They just and it are was making like, excuses to procrastinate it. Well, no, they said if I wanted it printed, it was going to be like a thousand something dollars, and then for the discs, it was four fifteen. Wait, how something. much? Over a thousand dollars for printed documents. But the CDs. Why can't they just throw them in the vault for you? That's what I'm saying. Is that's what I think that they're going to do? But like I said, I have to battle them again because or electronically send them. I mean, we're in 2023. That's what I, you know what I had, I told her, I said, can't you just yes. like mail them to me in zip files or something? PDF. Send a PDF. You know, they have them. Yeah, no, they want to make well, the money off the of reproduction. PD, I could just take the, um, <clears throat> hard drive. I mailed to them. Yeah. But I mean, I they'd the rather have an employee sit there and sit and there. burn it on CDs, <laughs> and do which I don't that. even I don't even know. Oh yeah, I do have a computer with a CD reader. But like I, I mean, was like does anybody even own those anymore? Like I'm just to buy. Uh, my laptop yeah, most, most which computer... is only a year old has a CD thing that pops out. Does it? Yeah, no. That, my that laptop has not This is like the third laptop I've owned that doesn't even have one. Mine doesn't have one, nor my new computer for my desktop. I mean, they you can buy them for really cheap. LVSA has a bunch of drives. Well, I've like, got a, uh, um, like a detachable one with a USB plug, so if I ever do get yeah. a computer yeah, that I have doesn't one too. have one, I can still use that. And I still actually have an old computer from 2007 that my son's like, you need to get rid of that. I'm, Ew. Like, I but, just looked okay, down at the comments and I see these new computers do not have butthole talk in the, the butthole chat. conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just put <laughs> That's on Danny my comments. That's stick going. And Danny is right there talking about his butthole smells. 
I was well. Point of stick started the butthole conversation. Butthole Danny's just chiming in. They crack me up. Got it. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Anyways, I had to laugh at that. I'm catching up on the chat right now. Sorry. It's kind of funny. It's actually funny. I'm going to jump off of here. I'm gardening and I had just sat down to take a break to come and chime thank in about the book. And Thank you for doing that. Yeah. I hope everybody uh, likes it. Yeah. Oh, I can't and wait. You, and you obviously don't mind it being advertised on our channels, right? Oh, no, absolutely. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Everybody that has a channel advertise just, Michelle's book because this is really just cool. Just wanted to make sure before I did it. If I do it, just wanted to make sure I'm good to go. No, yeah, it. absolutely. Cool. Spread the word. Like I said, hopefully it falls into the hands of somebody that wants to mess with the FBI or <laughs> I don't know. Great. Or something, you know. So a retired get FBI more boss or politician that wants to jump in would be great. So out yeah. of our Vegas community YouTube land, are do you think you're the only one that's written a book? Because I haven't heard of anybody yes. else. She there is. are books, but they're not by our community. People. No, not no, by no, anybody no. that we're tight with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I haven't read any books on it, and I haven't watched any documentary series or none of that. And I will not watch the the TV shows on it. I refuse. I've read some oh, of the I've books, watched and they're all like of them. Mm -hmm. everything that's come out. I've watched, and they're like BS. I'm too. I'm too afraid that I will end up out of control mad shay has so an idea send a couple copies out to some of your local congressmen mm. That's i will on their desk and it's not that wow. long and they might be like oh i'm gonna thumb through this and they might be like aha interesting yeah they know who i am down there for sure because i'm always calling them about following up with the fbi for me it's the only that is what prompted getting the first series of documents from the FBI is contacting Susie Lee's office. Who's my representative here in Las Vegas. <clears throat> and um, essentially like sending the FBI a veiled threat about not wanting to proceed with a congressional inquiry. And then we got those document drops and they've pro I'm thinking they're just like, Oh, maybe she'll go away now, but like, you're not going away. I'm not going away, and a lot of those documents are all essentially repeats or, like, worthless. Like, you're going to give me a fingerprint man manifest? Why? It's going to be completely fucking redacted. There's no point in giving us that. Well, I hate to put pressure on you, but it's gotten to the point where it's like, we know you're doing all this, so all of us have been able to sit back and relax. Because <laughs> we know <laughs> Michelle's going to get this if the getting is going to ever come. <laughs> yeah, no, Michelle, I'm, pretty, I, I, I'm pretty relentless. Sorry. I have a question, Michelle. Uh huh. Why are they heavily redacting all this information in the FOIAs? I mean, I know they redact some things, and I get that, but you know, like the the last release that we got in February, the redactions were worse than the the, the first. Well, uh, yeah, and I mean, the front cover of the FOIA request or the FOIA is going to tell you exactly how bad it's going to be. There was like something like a hundred pages that were outright listed that they're completely removed from it because we can't see them for whatever the listed reason is next to it. And um, there was just recently an article written by the Las Vegas review journal asking that same question. Like we know who was involved. It was, you know, the only people of interest uh, were, you know, Stephen Paddock and Mary Lou Danley. The only person arrested and convicted of a crime was Douglas Haig. He's done with his sentence. He's, he's off paper, I think and everything like he's done. Um, <clears throat> So, like, we can presume that their fingerprints are going to be on things and, and things of that nature, but they're just holding it back for whatever reason. Um, it's strange, because if you go to the vault and pull up any other case, you get a very much, diff like, a very different picture of what FOIAs could potentially look like, where it's very transparent mm -hmm. and everything's out in the open. Um, yeah. But yeah, when you're redacting witness names and things like that, it's kind of ridiculous. Like, I know that there was a lot of, in the beginning, there was a lot of uh, uh, excitement by, you know, citizen journalists and things like that over this case. And things got 
heated very quickly. And I know that there was a concern for safety for people that were named and things, especially with like a lot of the conspiracy theories. Um, so maybe that's why is just for the safety of everybody, but it's just over redacted. Like, does anybody ask why? Like, does anybody? Has yeah, anybody I do. And they said it's none of them. Oh, I should, I should let you guys know this. So, <clears throat> um, I was curious to see how the FBI was going to handle this situation. So I submitted two FOIA requests, nearly identical. My grandfather used to work for Northrop Gr Grumman, which is like Lockheed, right? He was an engineer. He had top secret clearance. <clears throat> um, he passed away. So I wrote the F or I submitted a FOIA for um, his security clearance and whether or not he had any involvement paid or unpaid with the federal Bureau of investigation um, in his background. And um, I submitted that one. And then I immediately submitted one for Stephen Paddock that said, um, um, I'm looking to see about the security clearance for Stephen Paddock and uh, who worked for Lockheed Martin um could you tell me about any involvement paid or unpaid with the fbi and the two responses i got were like night and day the one for my grandfather was very cordial like we ran it through our customary system um and we didn't get any hits which is strange because i know we had top secret clearance but maybe the fbi is not in charge of that fine whatever but when compared to the stephen paddock request it's like we're not going to confirm or deny anything and it's like essentially it's like none of our fucking business so you're it's, asking the same question but it was the, it was identical it. except for the names had changed and lockheed martin and northrop grumman were the only things changed i mean obviously dates of birth and dates of death but but essentially like all the the requests was the same and i got two very different responses interesting so <laughs> weird they're hiding something. We don't know. Well, no, because well, now I have, to re I have to resubmit the Stephen Paddock one and go, your protocol is to run it through the system they mentioned on my grandpa's stuff. Did you do so? I know, you know what I mean? So I have to appeal it. So this is what takes a lot of time for me because it's like, not like I could just submit something by email and it just gets, you know, answered within 24 hours. It's like a waiting game for everything. Every time you go back and forth with them, is it the same person? No, 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 no. So you're it's just a, a it's just a FOIPA, FOIPA officer, freedom of and information. And it's always a different person. Yeah, it's just somebody in Virginia, so but different people. So you can't even get into like a conversation with someone where you're like building upon the previous emails. Um, no, they have it all there at their fingertips. I mean, they can see your whole history. Yeah, I'm sure. Um. But no, there's a lady that I was talking with every so often, and I think she got like moved somewhere else, which is kind of a bummer because she was really nice about it. Some of these officers are not nice. Like, I understand people call often and stuff, but like, but it's their job. They're paid. Yeah, but it's it. not their job to explain shit to you. Apparently, uh, like that's their attitude about it. Especially so on I cases like question. this, I think. Does anybody have a database? Anybody that you know of? that has listed what we were what we yes, were LDSA supposed to receive and, got it. and what we yes. haven't received and who's looking for what that kind of thing yeah yes. we have it on the primary officers and stuff on the scene um we have a spreadsheet with everything we have don't have okay, if it was so mentioned in another thing? report if Someone it wasn't can't. mentioned but the problem is, was is a lot of these officers that, responded from home like off the clock off duty so that was their excuse for not grabbing their body cams for some reason but is that uh, like i think we were owed a bunch of building camera still and oh yeah, yeah that's, that's that. what i wrote about in the book also is there was an article that they did with um the, L the las vegas review journal did with the not department of homeland security but like a national security division or whatever that's out here and in 2014, they were listing all the cameras and things they had on the strip and like the most, you know, obviously near Sahara at the north end, of, the north end of the strip is worse than the south end. But you figure within those three years, every year they add more of those mobile police stations or like, they look kind of like a, I don't know what, these are just like, like a, on a trailer, like cameras they hoist up and it blinks red and blue. 
Mm -hmm. And then all of the cameras for around the um, T-Mobile Arena, um, now Allegiant Stadium, all that's LVMPD. And it says in the article, like, what the capabilities are. They're like, yeah, we can zoom in and see what somebody's drinking. Or we can see somebody, you know, scamming people on the trip playing three cart or whatever that that, that one so. game is. Yeah. But it's like, if you have those kind of capabilities, then where is that footage? So where is this information being documented at? Just between certain people or is it? Well, no. See, when we requested all the footage, they would turn around and say, that's not us. That's um, uh, the no. the highway. Uh, what is it? Not, it's not Caltrans. I don't know what it is out here. But essentially, then, like, their highway system, you know, footage. And, oh, they don't keep that on file. But even with LVMPD, we requested um, recorded uh, interviews by some of the detectives and we were told they were recorded over. They don't have them anymore. So the, the database thing I was asking about, where is this? Oh, is it's this... not public. We have it. Got yeah. Yeah. Cause those have been my questions forever. And it's like, well, I don't even know. Where... Yeah. That thing's massive too. I'll ask LVSA if he could give you access to it. Yeah. He yeah, gave me just... access a while ago. And then now I'm the link so doesn't curious work. About that. Um, yeah, mobile guard unit. Here. Thanks, guys, and I'll be reading the book, and um, it's, that's exciting. Congratulations! Yeah, in a few weeks we need out. to do another one of these, like a book club, after everyone's read it. That'd be fun. And talk about it. That'd be fun. All right, guys, you all have a good day. I'll still be listening though. Thanks for coming on, Angela. Awesome. We're gonna finish up soon, yeah, because none Definitely. of us wanted to go real long, anyways. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. But yeah, I'm glad you came on and showed Thanks for them coming, Angela. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for all your help. Someone just opened a can of Coke, and I didn't. It wasn't me. That was me. <laughs> that was me. That was Matt. I can almost hear the bubbles. Actually, it was a can of Pepsi, not Coke. Oh, that's not. Oh, that's not Coke. American. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys want to wind this up? Sure. Um, yeah, buy the book. That's all. I don't know. Yeah, if you're we'll, local, we'll keep putting it in the. Uh, we've got a lot of the Facebook groups that we're administrators on. We'll keep pumping it in there. And uh, like I said, let's in a couple weeks after more people have read it, we'll do a live stream, and it's like we can pull on everybody. Like keep track of who you know that read it. Like, we'll see if Eric will come on, P.S. will come on, whoever read it, and then the people in the chat, too. And we'll actually do, like, a chit-chat about it. I think that would be cool. Yeah, and I'll if anybody's local, get my information, because I'm willing to meet up with anybody and stuff. I like meeting you guys. Oh, that was another thing. You said you were going to do a signing at Barnes & Noble. Yeah, as soon I as guess... I find out the date and time, I'll let you know. Yeah, let us know when you know that, because Joe wants to know, and there's probably other people that are in the Vegas area that would go to that. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, you just go, and I'll, I'll be there signing, up but then the also... Is this coming up in the next couple weeks? Huh? Is this yeah, probably like within a month weeks? or two, because it's a really busy time right now, because school's out. They're doing a bunch of stuff. Okay. Um, and there was already an author that, author that they were having for June. So <clears throat> I told them I was available in July. They said they were going to look into it, and then they're going to let me know. But I went through the first process, at least, so they know I'm not just some whack job. But um, not only will I be signing, but I'll be giving a, a talk, too, which I'm already prepping for. Which is, it's just a little less casual. You know, there'll be bullet points and things. And, I mean, you guys already know this stuff, probably, so. Uh, Joe, if you're going live, drop your link in here so people can grab it before we end. Joe's in the chat. I think he, he unless he's joking, I think he might be going live. Yeah, definitely let us know when the signing is. If it was in the fall, I'd make a trip out there, but I just went in April, so I can't go again this quick. Man, yeah, summer sucks out here anyways. <laughs> uh, that's the thing. I tell my dad and my brothers, it's like, I don't want to come out in the dead heat of summer. That's just too much for me. I mean, it's bad enough here in the heat, but there, it's just, wow. It's like 115 and stuff, yeah. It's already like 90, so. I'm surprised it's not hotter than that. You guys actually had cooler weather this year. Yeah, yeah. But we won't have any relief until like just before Halloween. 
Well, Joe, I know you haven't started it up yet, but put your link anyway so people can like watch for it because there's a lot of people in this chat that aren't normally like subs on your channel that would probably like your channel. So just drop it anyways. <laughs> Joe's like, well, I haven't started it yet. Um, Wait, discerning light. You, which which footage are you talking about? Are you talking about the FBI investigation or cleanup part? Or are you talking oh, about? Oh no, the, she's talking about Joe Kashigo from the top of the Mandalay Bay. The photographer? Yeah. Oh, I got you. Yeah, he didn't have any um, of the time elapsed of the actual shooting. Unless they confiscated it and told him to say he didn't. But I've talked to him and Michelle's talked to him and none of that came out. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, yep. That's that's that then. Okay, there's the link to Joe's channel. If you guys aren't subscribed, subscribe to Joe. Even if you don't agree with Joe's theories, he has got some really, really interesting, interesting videos. His... Uh, Video making quality. I think he went to a class or something. It's gotten superb. <laughs> I'm really impressed. Um, so yeah, he might go live tonight. I don't know for sure if he's the going, link's but... there. Yeah, I see it. I think we pulled his teeth to get him to put it in there. Um, okay, well, everybody have a good night, and I think this is a good time to close. And we will get back together in a couple weeks after everybody's read the book. And come on, you guys, buy the book, buy the book, buy the book. It'd be great to have a huge discussion on it. And I'm so excited about waiting for mine to come. <laughs> well, tomorrow, hopefully. Yeah. Well, for sure, because that was the date they said. So if it didn't come earlier, it'll for sure be here. But I thought you said it was supposed to come on Friday. No, I went back and looked and it said Tuesday. Oh, okay. I was hoping it would come Friday. But yeah, the date that was on my thing when I went back and looked was Tuesday. I think I got mixed up because it was holiday weekend and I had the driveway poured Friday and a mattress delivered today. And it's like, I don't really know what day's what this week. <laughs> Fellow Mon, hi, you're late. We're just getting ready to end. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Matt and Michelle. And I am so excited about your book. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everyone. Everyone have a good night. Bye. Good night, everybody. All right. Bye, everyone.